Alright, so I decided I just need to start talking more and recording more stuff and just um, doing something with it. So, this is a start. Um, so, the other day I got home from work and I noticed my headlight was out. I was kind of upset because it was the same headlight and I've replaced it three times. Um, and yes, I'm very careful with the hand oils and whatnot. I always use a, a napkin or something to, to put it in. But regardless, um, blew my headlight. Um, I didn't get home till like 7 o'clock at night and due to my work schedule, um, you know, I don't get much time when I do work um, to do things after work. I, I work an hour and 15 minutes away. Um, so I have a two and a half hour commute for work. Um, plus my eight to nine hour shift. Um, so anyway, I came home from work uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Thursday night. And um, you know, I didn't feel like going back out and getting a light bulb. You know, I figured uh, I would drive to work in the morning and I would hopefully leave a little early so that I, or take a break during the day so that I could, um, you know, get my light bulb fixed. So, uh, I asked in the morning after I got to work, I was like, hey, you know, what's today gonna be like? And, you know, they thought it was gonna be pretty busy. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, no big deal. Well then, uh, at about like one or two o'clock, it wasn't very busy, you know? I mean, we had um, a moderate amount in, it was a lot of money, and um, it was a very slow Friday. So uh, I go up to my boss and I said, hey, you know, would it be possible for me to either A, take a break, and you know, go get my light bulb fixed, or uh, B, leave early? Uh, because here's the thing, when I usually leave work, I, I don't leave till like 5.30. Um, and by then, it, it already starts getting dark. Um, and I knew it was supposed to rain. So that was another thing. Um, so, they ended up getting a little frustrated with me. Um, and basically, you know, didn't want me to leave early because I made a comment about, I was like, well... Um, is there someone else that wants to pick up hours? Maybe they can come in early. And she's like, no, I'm, I'm not calling in someone in early so you can go fix your light bulb. And I'm like, okay. So she's like, I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll talk to you in a minute. So I'm like, all right. So I go and I, you know, do my work. And about 20 minutes later, she comes over and says, you know, if I, if I get you out of here at 5, I think you'll be okay. So I'm like, okay, I mean, I guess, I mean, 5 is better than nothing, right? Well, push come to shove, uh, we ended up getting busy around like 4, 4.30ish, and it was just like nonstop, right? I didn't end up leaving until 5.30. Um, kind of frustrating, um, not like a big deal, you know, and I know my employer's not responsible for my light bulb, don't get me wrong, before those comments start coming, um, you know, which is why I asked to take a break, like, in the middle of the day, and just come back, you know, um, and then maybe it wouldn't have been as much of an inconvenience, because the rain, when it started to rain, that's when it really started to pick up, that's usually when it gets busy in pizza, you know, people, um, you know, they order delivery because they don't want to leave their house, right? So, um, when it rains and when it snows is when the business comes in. So it started to rain and that's when it started to get busy, you know, which was obvious. You know, and I, I offered to come back. Um, and then, uh, anyway, so, moving on from that. Uh, I came home and I pretty much slept. Like, I... I think I pretty much decided that this job isn't for me. Um, what happened was, I have a lot of experience with Domino's Pizza, and um, uh, basically where I left, I was a supervisor of three stores, and 
uh, well, training supervisor of three stores, and I ran like three shifts a week, um, and I just, I mean, working ways, um, I can't keep up with these young kids anymore, um, and you know, being on my feet for eight to ten hours straight is just really kicking my ass. Um, you know, yesterday I came home and I got on the computer for like maybe half an hour. I did it just long enough, just long enough to search for like work from home jobs because um, I'm really interested in, in doing some kind of remote call center kind of thing. Um, if I can get that kind of job um so i did a search for like half an hour maybe and i did two applications um well i did one and started another for william sonoma um but i didn't finish it um which i'm hoping to finish it tonight uh but i was so exhausted i like my days like it just it takes everything out of me um so I came home and I was on the computer for half an hour and then I went to bed. So we're probably talking by the time I left work, 5.30, did my light bulb. Um, I don't think I got home till like 7, maybe 7.30. Um, and then I have to wake up at 6.30 in the morning to get ready to leave, you know, um, to be to work for 9 uh, the next day. So I went to bed. I went to bed and I slept through the whole night. Uh, which is actually good because um, sometimes what will end up happening if I if I lay down like really early like that um, I'll fall asleep I'll wake up at midnight actually yeah midnight ish um, midnight ish no if I usually get home at 630 I fall asleep around 7 um, I usually wake up at like 9 for some reason and then uh, it throws off my schedule because I wake up at nine and I'm up till midnight and then I go to sleep from midnight to 6.30, you know, which isn't bad. I'm still getting roughly eight hours of sleep a day. <sighs> it's kind of split up, but sometimes like if I don't go to, I, like I can't get to sleep at midnight, right? So then I'm up till like three o'clock in the morning and I only get like three hours of sleep and that sucks. You know, trying to, you know, stay awake for the next 12 hours um, on three hours of sleep, you know, and not, I'm trying not to like sound complainy, um, but it, it's just not something I'm used to and I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can keep up with it, you know. Um, <sighs> I don't like having to drive an hour and 15 minutes to get to work. Um, I, in the long run, if I could suck it up for maybe five years, yeah, uh, it would probably pay off. Um, the problem is, I don't know if I could make it five years, uh, physically and mentally. Um, when I left my previous organization, if there was a problem, I solved it. You know, it, I didn't have to ask for permission. It wasn't, hey, why don't we do this? I mean, there were some things that were above my head, uh, but for the most part, if somebody wasn't doing their job, it, it was just, hey, you're doing it wrong, you know, and fix it. Uh, now, um, because I, I've had to kind of almost, I wouldn't say start over, um, but I'm not in that same position anymore, so I am not very good with, um, you know, just kind of like letting things slide. Uh, and, and, and I'm not very good at conveying it to someone who should already know it. You know what I mean? Like, um, how do I put this? Um, I have a problem communicating with people who are above me, but doing something wrong, okay? Um, and some of you might say, well, it's not your job to call them out. In a, in a way, you're kind of right. Um, 
but Domino's has certain standards in place for a reason. Um, and it doesn't matter who you are, um, whether you're a driver, a CSR, um, a pizza maker, a manager, uh, or a supervisor, everyone is supposed to abide by those standards. Um, and I, I don't just, I'm not very good at just like going with the flow. If somebody's doing something wrong, I'm going to say something. I don't care if, you know, you're paying me $7 an hour or $100,000 a year doesn't matter if it's wrong it's wrong I have integrity I'm gonna tell you it's wrong am I um, am I gonna do it in a politically correct way I can't guarantee that am I gonna try to do it so I don't hurt your feelings yes um, are my intentions good yes but at the same time um, sometimes I don't even want to say anything sometimes um, I avoid confrontation uh, and I don't like it. Um, and that's why being on top is a little bit easier because when somebody's doing something wrong, you don't have a problem telling them. I'm your boss. That's what I'm supposed to do, right? But when I am below somebody, it it's harder to kind of break that ice, I guess. Um, and, and I don't... For example, I had a situation yesterday... Um, general manager goes uh, did you know that you're not supposed to fill the pizza sauce bottles from the pizza sauce that's in use and I said yes and she goes well then why have you been doing it and I was like I haven't been doing it and she's like I'm pretty sure I saw you doing it and I'm like no nah, I'm pretty sure you didn't uh, because I I know that rule um, and she's like why didn't you say anything and I'm like because when I do say things um, Sometimes there's usually an excuse why it's not being done that way, why it can't be done that way, or why it doesn't matter. So I don't like how this is turning me into like that complacent uh, perception is not reality. Well, no. Yes, that I'll get into that in a second. But I don't like how it's turning me into this um, this kind of zombie. You know, because she's right. I should have said something, right? That's who I am. Um, but at the same time, because of everything that I've said before and getting, like, turned down or, or having some kind of excuse for not doing it, um, I didn't bother. I didn't bother saying anything about the sauce. Um, so, I... And this is where the perception is not reality comes in. Because a lot of people, um, and my dad had a really good story for this. Um, a lot of people just want to feel or wants everything to look like everything is okay or perfect. I, I don't, I want to be careful with that word perfect because nobody's perfect. All right. Everyone wants the perception that everything is going well, no matter what it is. Okay. Uh, my dad was in the Navy for 25 years, um, and he talked about a situation where he was on a boat, and his uh, CO asked for um, a, uh, a a topo map, is what it's called, and they basically like draw um, sound on a piece of paper and uh, try to pinpoint where something's coming from, right? Um, and and they do it, and the, and the CO wanted it for this, um, like, um, fishing ship, right? It was just like a, a small boat uh, where the engine, like, the frequency really couldn't be picked out. Uh, the way my dad described it was like, it was just white snow. It would like blended in too, too well with, with everything. You, you couldn't find it. Um, so, you know, they're going back and forth and, you know, the chief, his chief tried to explain to the, to the CEO that, you know, yeah, dude, it's just not possible. You really can't do it. And he's like, I don't care. I want it. So the chief comes back and tells my dad he's got to make this topo mat. And he's like, chief, like, what, how am I going to do this? And he's like, I don't care. Just, just, just get it done. So my dad, you know, because it, it didn't matter. Like, he, there was no way he was going to be able to draw an accurate topo map. He just he just drew it. He just made shit up, put it on a piece of paper, and handed it 
you know, to the chief, and, and the chief gave it to the, the CO, and then the CO came back and was like, oh my God, this is awesome. You did, a, you did a fantastic job. Like, I can't believe this. This is amazing. You know, like giving him this huge pat on the back. Okay, long story short, perception is not reality, okay? All these people who think that life is gravy, all right, as long as, you know, it looks like it, all right? If you're running 85, and in, in domino standards, if you're running 85% DOT, your labor's in spec, your food is in spec, you know, and you have good OER scores, everything is perfect. No, bullshit. Bullshit. You know, that that's only a fraction of what's actually going on. Um, you know, I saw so much, uh, uh, for, okay, so, um, the OER inspectors around, which stands for Operation Evalu Evaluations Report, um, and it's it's basically like the standard Domino's uses, okay? Um, and they're, uh, they're close, right? And so this whole week, you know, there's been a lot of cleaning going on, there's been a lot of, you know, make sure you do your drops, make sure you don't have more than $20, make sure you're doing this, make sure you're doing that. Uh, and, and which is good, uh, but in my opinion, that's stuff that should be done all the time. You know, the fact that an OER inspector is around shouldn't cause panic or alarm in the staff uh, so that, you know, everything's perfect. Okay, see, I gotta stop saying that. I told you I wanna be careful with the word perfect. Um, so everything's great, okay? Um, you know, as long as you're doing everything 90% all the time, you're gonna do fine, okay? The problem becomes when you have this attitude that, oh, the OER is around, we have to do good. Um, you know, people do good when the OER is around, and then when the OER is not, they get this attitude that, oh, you know, we just got inspected, we don't have to worry about it. And that's not the right attitude, okay? Because the standards aren't in place only for when the OER is around. You know, um, the standards are supposed to be followed all the time, um, and, and that and that really bothers me. So as far as um, integrity goes and, and making it uh, at this this current job, I, I don't think I can do it because the problem is way higher than than I. Uh, even am able to try to influence you know it's just it goes so high so there's uh dominoes does this pipeline thing okay they hire college graduates and um you know they uh give them an opportunity to grow within the company and they, and they they have like stages they have to go through they have to work like six months as a insider and then six months as an assistant manager then six months as a general manager and then so on and so forth well you know that's all fine as long as they're doing everything to get there well I, I heard about a situation where the, uh, two uh, pipeline candidates um, one of them was only an assistant manager for a month before they made her a GM of a store uh, and it kind of worries me that you know how much Domino's experience like <laughs> the lack of Domino's experience or training for that matter because that's going to be my next topic um, does she have to run a store you know and is she is this kind of like a trial by fire learn as you go kind of thing and to me that's just bad for business uh, it's, it's bad for the employee and, and it's bad for the owner um, and the company so the other candidate uh She's been around, she's, she got her fair six months as an assistant manager before she's going to be a GM, but, however, um, has had no um, formal general manager training, okay? And now I know Domino's has formal general manager training. Uh, they have general manager GM IT classes, one, two, three, and four is just store ready. There's no uh, content for it, but... As far as the other ones, there's workshops um, that uh, are available, um, and I know this because I have I have 12 years with Domino's. So, um, but.
but in a franchise environment. And I know corporate, you know, talks about these things a lot. And I used to teach these classes. That's, that's what I used to do. Um, and she's told me that she hasn't taken any of them. Actually, I think she's she might have taken one. Oh, no, no, no. She was signed up for one and then couldn't go because she had to go back to Michigan for something. Um, okay, so that's what happened. Um, long story short, uh, you know, Domino's has this stuff that I know they spent a lot of money on developing these, these training programs uh, because I know it's not cheap. Um, you know, the people who are developing them are probably well-educated people with, you know, college degrees, with maybe master's degrees, um, you know, technical writers. And in the content that they push out, it, it probably isn't something that, um, you know, is taken very lightly, okay? Uh, because it, it represents the brand. So, and it's good content. I mean, there are some stuff, you know, little flaws here and there. But I won't go into that. Overall, the training content is good. So, why have it in this corporate environment, uh, these employees uh, been exposed to that? Why isn't that a priority? Why is trading not a priority in Domino's? Um, I don't know. Um, again, maybe this is something that's you know, frankly none of my business. You know, some people out there may say that, you know, who am I to be calling Domino's out on this? Um, but at the same time, uh, I think for anyone, uh, it's, training's important, you know? Um, in any business. If your employees don't know how to do their job and do it well, then they're really at a disservice. Um, you know, the learning curve is just gonna be that much longer. Um, ways. Uh, the, the, the learning... Miles. Exit to exit 76B, US 1, US 301, Belvedere Street. <laughs> Uh, yeah, your, your employees just, they need it, all right? They want it, they want training, they want to learn, they, they want to get better, and they want to perform for you. They just, you have to give it to them, okay? And if you're not giving it to them, it's just going to waste, you know? And that's my whole thing. Uh, why would corporate make a training program and not use it on their own employees? I have... I haven't the slightest idea. Um, and, it, and that's one big thing that has me so disconnected with this job right now because I like I want to believe um, that this it, like that this is a dream. You know, the company I came from, uh, what ended up happening pretty much was uh, it came down to money. Um, I was severely underpaid for what I was doing. Um, you know, there's people in similar positions uh, making two to three times as what I was making. Um, and I just couldn't do it. I, it just, it, I mean, I wanted to get out of Connecticut. Um, the snow sucked. Um, but had I made what I was, what I should have been making, I probably would have been a little less hesitant to leave, um, but it, it wasn't even coming close, you know, it was so, uh, so below what I should have been making, so anyway, that's a, that's a different topic for a different day, um, yeah, well, now that, you know, that 24 minute rant um, is pretty much over. I'm, I'm almost at work now. I'm gonna try to get better at these rants, I think. Um, I don't know how much of it I'm gonna actually post just because uh, a lot of people know I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and um, I, would, I don't know how I feel about um, current employees and staff seeing uh, this information. So this was kind of uh, for myself, um, just to see, well, not to see anything. I, I, I need to make content. Um, I need to get better at just turning on the video camera. 
I'm hoping the audio came out okay, and I hope the background music isn't too loud. Um, it actually, come to think of it, background music might be a copyright problem. I don't know. Something to think about. Um, Alright, well, I'm going to go try to enjoy my day at Domino's. Highly unlikely. Um, but I will possibly do one on the way home. We'll see. Uh, the problem with um, night videos is it's very dark in my car. So, I don't know if um, that's going to work out. Um, but maybe I can do, like, uh, just record the audio and then, um, you know, have it. Um, what was I going to say? I, I could put some video overlay on it or something. I don't know. All right. Well, y'all have a good day. Drive safe. Bye.